What's happening my fellow geeks and geekheads? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today I'm going to be showing you guys how with the help of my good buddy Ben Ball we molded our 3D printed Batfleck cow. Now what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how we did the texturing on the 3D print itself, how we prepped it for molding, how we did the silicone mold and the two piece plaster mother mold. I'm also going to be showing you the resin I'm using for these final hard copy display pieces. Unfortunately I did not hit record when I pulled the casting out of the mold but it's pretty strange straightforward so I do have the casting here and I will show you guys at the end of this video. Me and Ben are over the moon with how the mold turned out. It was very clean, hardly any flaws whatsoever on the surface and it picked up all that beautiful detail that we applied to the print. So that being said, let's get to it. Now what Ben is spraying on here is a leak seal from Rust-Oleum and when it's sprayed from a distance in quick little whips as you can see right there it creates this sort of surface texture like a bat skin almost. So Ben's just very delicately going over and making it all uniform. So we did two solid coats all over the cowl. We then let that dry and it does have a sort of rubbery feel to it. So I then sealed it back up with a Rust-Oleum matte black and then a clear coat seal all over. As you can see here, it just creates that beautiful kind of bat skin quality to it, which really brings it up a level. Now these are all the supplies we have got ready on hand. We've got our silicons, we've got our plaster bandage, and we have our UltraCal 30. Now we do need some flashing around the perimeter of the print itself, just so we have some excess area around the mold itself. And we just use some standard Batman playing cards, funnily enough, just keeping with the theme. And so this has been permanently mounted on a wooden base, so it's not going anywhere. It's been filled with resin and foam filled, so it's sturdy and solid and it can take a beating with all those brush strokes that are gonna be going all over it. So I'm just getting my silicon ready. I'm using Pinky Sill from Barnes. This is a one-to-one -one scale mix. I'm mixing up a batch for myself and a batch for Ben. So Ben's gonna take the front half of the cowl. I'm gonna take the back half of the cowl. So the first two coats of silicon are always important. They're what's called print coats. So we are using much more delicate, much more expensive brushes for these two coats because you wanna get the silicon in all that detail and you want minimum air bubbles. So we're just gonna start just spreading it all over the surface and then go to town and start to get in all the detailed areas. So it doesn't matter how messy you are, but the point is you want to get those first two coats into all that detail and have as little air bubbles as possible. Now all up, I think we did about six coats and we were running into the night here. So that's why I eventually did have to get out my studio lights out the back because we lost a lot of light, but we still kept going. Now after several coats, what we did is we got some pinky seal putty, which is essentially pinky seal, but like Play-Doh. So you mix the two pieces together. And what this is gonna do is fill in anything that could inhibit the plaster banded shell mole from cracking away if there are undercuts, especially in that neckline there. We've got that very muscular neck. We've also got the eyes I wanna fill out and around the ears just to thicken up that area. Cause any part of a sculpture or a print that has a really high point, uh, the silicon does not really want to adhere to the very point of the print or the sculpture. So that putty really helps in thickening up those areas. 
After the putty stage, we then applied two more coats of silicon and I let it sit for two days because I was gearing up to do the plaster bandage mother mold, just want a bit of prep time. So you can see there, I've drawn a line right down the middle, even though it's not exactly in a straight line of where the plaster bandage mother mold will be separated. So I'm just getting everything prepped and ready. Now you just want to use some warm, clean water for plaster bandage and the reason being is it helps with the curing process because plaster works off heat, that's how it cures. So I'm just starting at the back first and these shell pieces are going to overlap one another so the front will overlap the back. And what I'm going to be using to render the plaster bandage because it does need some strength because this is a big mold is I'm going to be using some Ultra Cal 30 which is a gypsum plaster that I'm mixing up right there that has a very high strength to it. It's almost like concrete so what I'm doing is just rendering it over the plaster bandage once it has cured and I did three layers of Ultra Cal on the back and the front. And I'm very anal with how neat I want my mold so I was constantly smoothing and rendering because Ultra Cal sets in stages, you know, it, it, it's soft, it's pliable, and then it gets to much more harder. You can work with it, you can sculpt it. So I made sure the whole thing was smooth by the very end, as you can see right there. And then it was time to repeat the process, except this time it's on the front. And what I do is I go around the perimeter of the mold line there with some Vaseline and that is just gonna separate the two halves so they do not stick together because the last thing you want after all that work is a plaster bandage shell that does not separate because the two layers of plaster are stuck together. Now the only difference is I needed two batches of plaster bandages for the front because there is a lot more surface area at the front there. You look at the back shell and it's nowhere near as big as the front is gonna be. Now as you can see I'm just overlapping on the back portion of the shell and essentially that's how they're going to fit back together when we go to make a resin or urethane casting. Now I was really happy with how this mold turned out. I've never made such a neat mold in my whole life. So after letting it sit for a day and just letting the Ultra Cow fully cure, it's time to crack it open. Now it does take a bit of force because you've got to understand this is an airtight seal. So the back came off first and then the front was just carefully pried off. So the last thing you want is that slipping out of your hands and possibly breaking. Now because this is a seamless mold, meaning there's going to be no split up the back of the silicon portion of the mold, we do have to very carefully peel this off like a glove. So what I'm doing is baby powdering the entire area so the silicon doesn't really want to stick to one another when I do peel it off and it just gets messy if it does start sticking together. Especially when it comes to undercuts like the chin and the nose, you want to be really careful and just take your time and eventually it will peel off like a glove. Now I'm putting the mold all back together. I'm gonna to clamp the perimeter of the silicon mold to the Ultra Cow Shell mold. 
Now also to keep the plaster shell mold together, I'm just using some straps there, as you can see, like what you'd tie stuff down to the back of your SUV, ute or truck. And just some cheap disposable building clamps because those things are gonna get covered in resin. So there we go, the mold is all set to go. What we're gonna be using today is B Queen, which is a clear setting resin with a black tint. I'm gonna be doing four slush casts. So all up it's 240 grams for each uh, slush coat. So I'm just weighing that out, pouring that up, and you only need a little bit of tint because it goes a long way, this, um, this black tint. So I'm mixing that out and you just pour it in. I'm gonna pour it around the perimeter first just to let it get in all that detail in the neck. And I'm gonna to start to slush it around. Now, like I said, unfortunately, I did not hit record when I pulled this thing out of the mold, but how you saw me demold the 3D print, that is exactly how you pull a casting back out of the mold. And after some dremeling and trimming of the eyes and the mouth opening, it's time to show you guys our first casting. So thanks very much for watching guys. Like I said, I'm over the moon with how this has turned out. Unfortunately, I did not press record when I pulled this guy out of the mold, but it's pretty straightforward and it's just essentially like demolding the print itself. Now for the time being, I'm just gonna be focusing on making these resin display pieces. Next up is gonna be the base. It's gonna be like a Batcave theme base with the Batman v Superman logo right smack bang in the middle. I am practicing making urethane copies of this cow so they're wearable, but my God, urethane is a bitch to work with. You ask anyone that makes urethane cows or urethane armor, it is a real hassle. So I'm still getting the hang of it and I will get there. Hope you guys are well, hope you guys are happy, be merry, be silly, and until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. Who's there? Not your parents. Oh.